the mortgage foreclosure crisis. Uh, that's where public exposure is investigating. And what we've done is we've gone out and we found an expert into how to recover from the Financial Revival Group, Howard Bono. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Dan. Howard, uh, the financial uh, foreclosure crisis, we were going to show up on the screen, you know, a picture that so many people have probably have seen, which is, is the side of a house which has helped foreclosure. What does the Financial Re Revival Group do? What our job is to do is to educate people that are upside down in their homes. Latest statistics have shown about 25% of the people that have a mortgage on their house currently are upside down in their house. 25%, one in four. One in four. That's the, the public statistic. If you go to Detroit, it's 60%. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it varies from different parts of the country. Locally here, about one out of four. And so I think that statistic actually that's could be a little bit low. That's amazing because I live in Seattle and, and one in four houses as I go down the street are probably underwater. Those are the ones with a mortgage on them. So there are about 70 million homes in the country, and about a third of those, interestingly enough, are uh, owned outright. Huh. Yeah, so, um, so it's one out of four locally here, and what we're dealing with is a situation that we as adults never thought we were going to get into. Mm -hmm. And so now we've got this whole huge, huge group of people, rapidly growing group of people, that really don't know what to do. Well, let's talk about some of the individual issues then that they're going to have okay. to deal with. By the way, um, we're, we're not selling anything here, but if you were to go on to the MyRevival.com, MyFinancialRevival.com my financial website, you'd find some, uh, some interesting things there. I downloaded that book myself, and I learned an awful lot of things. All right, let's go to the first thing. Is a mortgage a moral contract, or is it a contractual one? You know, for most people, most people in our age bracket, for example, we were always taught that you've got to pay your bills, keep your word, keep your agreement, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. And, and so most people tend to think, oh, I made an agreement to, to pay my mortgage, so that's it. If you really look at the document that you signed, there was two things in there. The first thing said, I, the homeowner, if I make my payments, you, the bank, will leave me alone. And what you find is that's accurate. If you make your house payments, the bank doesn't call you. Yeah. But what that agreement, that document also says is, if I, the homeowner, don't make my house payments, you, the bank, get the collateral. That's an absolute choice that we have available to us based on the document we signed. That was the document that was drawn up by the bank. Most of us didn't even read it. And if we did read it, we might not have understood it because there's a lot of legalese in it. Mm -hmm. So it does say in that document that if I don't make my payments, the, the way that the bank can deal with that is to take the house. Now, the other have, they have some other remedies as mm -hmm. well. But I believe that people, that was part of the agreement. And so you can choose option number two as long as you're willing to deal with whatever those consequences are. Yeah, and so one of the things that this is out of the Washington Post. This is an article uh, actually from a few years ago in 2009. It said the nation's housing walking away from a mortgage. And the quote in it says that most owners are too worried about feelings of shame and embarrassment following a foreclosure and ignore the powerful financial reasons for going through with it, basically which is for walking away. Mm -hmm. Huh. I want to go to an example that you have on uh, as part of the, uh, the book. It's from Mark and Sarah. 19, in 2006, they bought an average home for two, $295,000. We're going to say this is not in the heart of Seattle or, mm -hmm. or, or Bellevue, right. but $295,000. At the time, um, they put $12,000 down, FHA loan. Right. Uh, their payments are $2,300 a month, and Mark was, I think, an electrician, and a, a union electrician, and Sarah took care of the kids at home and also did some part-time work, so together they made $75,000 a year. Right. So everything seemed just fine. Mm -hmm. Average thing. Okay, 2011 comes along. Their house is now worth $185,000 and not going up. Right. Uh, they owe $277,000 on it, and Mark's doesn't have very much work anymore. Sarah's dropped some work, and so they make less than $50,000 a year. What should they do? What they need to do is they really need to, what, what we at the Financial Revival Group do is we'll sit, we sit down with people. There, people have nine options in terms of the way that they can deal with their house. Nine different options. Hmm. Now, the first option is to stay and keep paying. It's a legitimate option. Uh, and, and many people, most people at this point, that's what they're doing because going back to that moral thing, they think that that's the only choice they have. They really have nine options. What Mark and Sarah chose to do, now Mark and Sarah is a real example I did change their names, but mm -hmm. it's a real example of one of, the, one of our members that we work with. And um, so what they did is they sat down and decided, 
here are the different options that we have. And, and most couples don't really talk about money. It's really fascinating to, to mm. see that. So what we want to do at the Financial Revival Group is we want to educate people in terms of all nine options that they have, talk about the pros and cons of each one of those options, and get them to have a dialogue between the two of them to really get on the same page and figure out what they're going to do. Mark and Sarah, in this particular case, they chose to say, we're never going to recover from that $100,000. So our credit will heal faster than that $100,000 will come back in the value of our property. What, so say that again, our, our credit will heal faster? Right. It, <clears throat> well, at the Financial Revival Group, we think that the housing market won't bottom out for three to four more years. We think that housing from where it's at today will drop at least another 20% from, from where it is today. And in our informal discussions that we have with people, universally people believe the same thing. And so people are going to act on what they believe. So Mark and Sarah came to us already saying, uh-uh, this is not going to come back. We think it could be 10 years before houses get back to the value that they're at today. If you listen to Susie Orman, she thinks it's 15 years. You know, so um, Mark and Sarah took a look at that. And Mark and Sarah said, you know something? We're, we're not going to do this. Mark and Sarah have chosen to not make the payments on their house, to let the bank foreclose on that property, and they're going to live in their house free for about a year, and they're going to save some money to set themselves up for the next phase of their lives. Now, they're going to go off to be renters, and they're going to rent a house for a few years while and the we're going to deals. We're going to talk about all of this in another segment. Right now, we're going okay. to take ourselves, ourselves a break.